ions that form white precipitate with aqueous ammonia are aluminium, zinc, and lead two ions. For easy memory, I will advise students to remember it as Z, zinc, aluminium, and lead two. So these three ions will form white precipitate with aqueous ammonia. So if we add aqueous ammonia into this unknown solution and white precipitate is formed, then which cation must be present? Could it be zinc? Could it be aluminium? Or could it be lead two? So what we can do is we can further add more aqueous ammonia to observe the changes. If the precipitate dissolves in excess aqueous ammonia to give a colorless solution, then we can confirm that the ion present must be zinc ion. If we add aqueous ammonia in excess and there's no observable change to the white precipitate, then we can say that the white precipitate does not dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. If that's the case, the two possible ions that are present must be aluminium or lead 2. So if that's the case, what can we do to distinguish lead 2 ions from aluminium ions? Take a moment to think about it. Now, have you thought of a method? Now, there are two ways that you can distinguish lead 2 ions from aluminium ions. Now, the first way, you can actually add salt solutions that contain iodide ions, for example, potassium iodide. So what will happen is, if the unknown solution contains lead 2 ions, then you will see yellow precipitate form if you add in potassium iodide into the solution. The yellow precipitate is lead 2 iodide, which is yellow color. Alternatively, a more common method, we can add any solution that contains chloride or sulfate ions. For example, we can add sodium chloride solution or not, we can add potassium sulfate solution. When any of this solution is added and if we see white precipitate form, then we can confirm that lead 2 ions must be present. Aluminium ions do not form precipitate with chloride or sulfate ions because aluminium chloride and aluminium sulfate they are both soluble in water. Now, we actually learned this solubility rule when we dealt with salts in an earlier chapter. Let's recap on this. You may want to refer to this table to have a very quick recap. So at all levels, the salts that we are concerned with are carbonate salts, nitrate salts, chloride salts, and sulfate salts. The two salts that we are focusing on now are chloride salts and sulfate salts. So all chlorides are soluble except lead to chloride and silver chloride. You can remember it as called little sailor, which is CLX. Chlorides that are insoluble are lead to chloride and silver chloride. What about sulfates? Now all sulfate salts are soluble except the following three. Calcium sulfate, lead to sulfate, and barium sulfate. Now an easy way to remember is C cute little baby. S C L B. Now S will be sulfate. Sulfate salts that are insoluble are calcium sulfate, lead to sulfate, and barium sulfate. So now to distinguish aluminium ion from lead to ions, we are actually making use of this solubility rule. Okay, so we add any solution that contains sulfate ions or chloride ions, only lead to ions will form precipitate with chloride and sulfates. If white precipitate is formed, then we can confirm that the cation that is present in this unknown solution must be lead to ions. If there's no precipitate form, if we add any solution that contains sulfate ions or chloride ions, then we can confirm that, hey, the cation that is present must be aluminium ions. If you find this video useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. If you'd like to have more chemistry resources, you may check out my website, the link is in the description below. Have fun learning chemistry and I will see you soon.